It's 9.30 Eastern time. It is Tuesday morning. Uh, we've started trading on Wall Street ever so slightly lower. Dow Industrials, I see a few winners, not many, but the Dow is down, what, 37.11%. The S&P 500, what's the percentage loss there? It is down 0 0.07. I call that flat. And the Nasdaq Composite, no change whatsoever. Okay, up 0.07%. Big Tech, Apple's up, Amazon's up, Meta, Alphabet, Microsoft on the downside. The big story this morning so far, I think, is Twitter. A whistleblower revealed major cybersecurity issues within the company. Susan Lee's with us. What's going on? Well, I think the stock is down because this disclosure on deficiencies, especially when it comes to spam, is going to help Elon Musk and his case to walk away from that deal in that Delaware court. So the complaints by the former head of cybersecurity, a Jack Dorsey hire, mind you, it pointed to what he called serious and egregious lapses, including making false and misleading statements, not only to users, but also to investors and also to regulators and allow too much access, he says, to all employees and even to foreign governments for use on the platform. And I think most importantly is that it seriously violates a 2011 settlement with the SEC and FTC over user information. Right. So these are some pretty serious allegations here. Zach Goh, he was hired after that infamous 2020 hack. Remember when numerous celebrities, politicians had their accounts infiltrated? And Zach Goh, as I mentioned to you, he's a Jack Dorsey hire. So guess where he's pointing the finger at all these efficiencies and deficiencies and lapses? Tell me. At the current CEO, Parag Agarwal. So this undermines Twitter and supports Elon Musk. It would seem to me. That's exactly in the battle right. over ownership of the company and why the stock is down. So if you have some concerns over what the number of actual users are in spam accounts, I think that helps Elon Musk. It looks like it. Now then, Apple. I just read this report. They're going to start uh, producing iPhone 14s in India. Production Huge assembly. Huge switch out of China. No, so this is this is a win for India, but this is not a story of Apple leaving China. Okay. It's more of an augmented story. So it's assembly doing going to both countries, and that means you'll have two assembly plants in China and India for the iPhone 14 and beyond. So Taiwan's Foxconn will be operating both sites. Bloomberg says that for the upcoming iPhone 14, India will start assembly two months after China starts. But the goal here is to eventually simultaneously ship from both countries, especially Especially with the COVID lockdowns, which has really impacted the supply chain and a lot of big corporations out there. Now, India does have its problems. Remember those high profile protests from Apple factories over pay and work conditions? You didn't see that in China. Also, secrecy is a concern since China has been pretty airtight. And, you know, Apple, of course, values their secrecy, especially with product launches. You're not going to see protests in China about wages and what have that's, that's not going to happen. But I digress. I'm moving on. Some more retail earnings before the bell today. I'm very interested in Macy's up 3%. Wow, look at that, right? And that's yeah. despite the fact that they cut full year forecasts, despite a pretty strong spring quarter for them. So they're anticipating, and this has an impact on the stock, but they're saying that shoppers are going to cut back on spending with the high inflationary environment that we're in, concerns over slowing growth and recession. But the springtime did look pretty strong. Sales and profit beating in that quarter. Don't they have a ton of inventory, which they've now got to get rid of by I think discounting? everybody has an inventory problem. Yeah. Target, and I think you're getting rewarded if you don't have an inventory problem right now and an issue. But I want to show you Dick's Sporting Goods because that is up and up as well. Also bidding on top and bottom lines here. They raise full year guidance instead of cutting like Macy's. And yes, okay, same store sales did fall, but it was less than anticipated. So some of these retailers, depends on who you are, are doing pretty well. Dick's Sporting Goods did very well right after they said we're not selling guns anymore. Uh, well, is that, do you think that was the inflection uh, point for the stock? Yeah, it was some time ago. Interesting. But it helped them at the time. Oh, before you go, Zoom. Way, way yeah. down. So I think that era of Zoom being part of our vernacular, especially during COVID lockdowns, so I think that time is done. So they cut their full year forecast. Better than expected earnings, though. But again, this was a pretty low bar. Revenue fell short. And Zoom CFO said that the company is having some difficulty attracting new paying subscribers. But he did say that, look, enterprise sales are still going strong. But those days of being locked down at home and Zooming, they're done. 
cybersecurity is supposed Always to be the name well. of the game, and yes. Palo Alto is doing yeah, well. Yeah, we talked about this starting with the Twitter, right? So Palo Alto, Nikesh Arora doing really well there, better than expected quarterly results, upbeat forecast, and guess what? They're splitting their stock three for one, which was just approved by the board of directors. So that stock split summer is uh, still going strong. I love to see those high price stocks splitting like they used to 20 years ago. Yeah, well, Tesla will be $300 yes, they do it on Thursday. by Friday. Uh, Friday morning, that's yeah, right. Yeah, Friday oh, morning. One more. Nat Gas. We didn't report this early. We should have. 985 per million British thermal unit. That, that's a 14-year <laughs> high. You see, it's so well so early. But I think this also tells us that we shouldn't be celebrating when inflation's at 8.5% instead of 9%. When you have Nat Gas at these 14-year highs and we're heading into the winter season globally, especially with Russia shutting down some of those pipelines, I think that tells us that high inflation might be still around, especially as we head into the winter months. Yes, indeed. Yeah. 986 on Nat Gas. Yeah, Susan, thanks very much. See you again later. Check that big board. We're in business now for nearly six minutes. We're up 19, 17 points, just a fraction higher. Dow winners topping that list. We have uh, Chevron, Caterpillar's number two. Intel's interesting. Um, they Brookfield. just arranged a financing deal, Brookfield right? Brookfield asset, $30 billion, which yeah. is very interesting. I need to check that stock to see what the, in, the um, dividend yield is. For Brookfield asset? No, for Intel at 34 bucks a share. I'll check that for because you. Because I think that dividend payment is pretty high at this point. Very attractive. Uh, S&P 500 winners. Who's leading that lot? Uh, Halliburton, CF Industries. Mosaic Company, no big names really. Oxy Peach there. Uh, Nasdaq Composite, Okta. Intel's on that list. NVIDIA, Fox Corporation, Netflix, all there. Where's the 10-year Treasury yield this morning? 3%. Well above 3%. What was that Intel yield? No, I'm checking it, but uh, 3%. I think that's kind of uh, been depressing stocks, especially Absolutely. in anticipation of, of uh, Jackson Hole. 306 on the 10-year. The price of gold this morning, 1752. Bitcoin, 21,000 bucks a coin, 21.5. The price of oil, uh, 92.97. So that's going up. Nat gas, we just showed you, 14-year high. And the average price for a gallon of regular gasoline is 389. For diesel, it's 497. Intel, 4.5. 3% dividend yields. So that's impressive. I, I didn't think. know it was that high. 4.3%? Wow. Tell you, not bad at all.